Yes. Okay, let's do a D ADFR. ADFR. It's a very nice molecular docking tool that you can download here at the CCSB scripts edu. Uh, I do recommend you follow the downloads uh, at least for this one one dot one dot one RC one candidate. I already have it installed, so I need to export my path. I do recommend that when you install, you take a note of this so you can use it over and over again. And for the purposes of this video, I guess I'm going to have to change directories. I'm going to put my files on the desktop. Oh, there's plenty of files on the desktop. Let's take a look at um, what will I do? I guess I'm going to make a new folder test, CD test. Now we're going to need a couple of files. First of all, I'm going to open a Chimera session to get the receptor and the ligand. And to get the receptor and the ligand, I'm going to use, of course, the structures from the PDV database. I have used uh, 1GXA, which is a lactoglobulin structure with a palmitic acid bound. Uh, first of all, I'm going to select all of the water molecules and remove them. Good. I'm going to select the residue, the palmitic acid, and I'm going to save it as a PDV. Since I have this folder of test on the desktop, that's what I'm going to call. I'm going to make sure I save selected atoms only, and I'm going to name it plm.pdb. Good. Now, since I already have it selected, I can easily erase it, which is what I'm going to do. And now I'm going to save the PDV. And that one I'm going to save as 1gxa.r, just to make sure that it's distinguished from um, the original PDV in case I have downloaded on the same folder, which is not the case, but it's always better that way. Now, I should have two files here, which are uh, the PDB as well as the receptor. Sorry, the PDB for the ligand and the PDB for the receptor. I need to prepare the files in, in two ways. First, I need to prepare uh, the ligand. Well, let's, let's go with the receptor. We need to prepare the receptor. This preparation entails transforming, creating a new PDVQT from the PDV. The, the instructions are here. I need to do prepare receptor minus R for the receptor. So I need to give it the R, the 1GXI R PDV, the one that has no ligands and no water molecules. Uh, and from here, I'm going to save uh, 1GXA, 1GXA R PDVQT, which is the file that I actually need for the docking. I'm going to make sure that I uh, carry out the process of fixing the bonds and hydrogens. This uh, structure is uh, has no hydrogens because it came from the uh, uh, straight from the RCSB database. They don't have hydrogens, so I'm I'm adding that, and I'm gonna make sure. And those are the commands I need. So R for the input file. O for the output file and A for the correction that needs to be done. It should work all right, and I think it was done correctly. There is the PDVQT. Now I need a similar, I, I need a similar command, but for the ligand. In this case, this command is minus L for the ligand. Um, PLMT minus O for the PDVQT file and I think minus A the same as before to give it hydrogens and check that the bonds are correct. Mm -hmm. Now why, why both? Well one the receptor is needed for creating the grids for the docking. There is no way to do docking with a DFR or autodock without the grids and the PDV can be used to create the environment, the box where the docking is going to be carried out. And that's why I'm going to show you now by using AGFR GUI, shown here. 
So here you can prepare your files in very different ways. I'm going to use the simplest, which is loading the receptor, the PDBQT file that we created for 1GXAR. Here it is. We could actually just look for the binding site uh, using the compute uh, pockets, which actually selects a very, very decent binding site. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm I'm going to follow all the steps if I was doing this right from the get-go, which is I just open the receptor, compute the pockets, and find that the first cavity pretty much is what I'm looking for. Then I'm going to go to the docking box and click on this button that is going to make the box fit the binding site. And I'm going to give it a, some padding, uh, just a six, because this binding site is actually, and the protein is kind of small. This is going to make sure that the docking search this area or this volume rather, and it, it reduces the likelihood of having a, a result outside of this cavity that I already selected. Uh, because I didn't load the ligand, all of the atom types are selected here, which I'm going to leave as it is, and then I'm going to click generate file. This file is going to be saved with the name of the receptor, but with the extension, extension TRG, which is probably fine. Because the volume of the search is tiny, as we selected in this case, the calculation of the gradient of the affinity maps and the gradient to the maps is done pretty quickly. This computer is a, a four-core computer uh, with 64 gigabytes of RAM. It's not a very recent computer, even though it may sound powerful. It's mostly that the volume that I'm going to use for the docking is tiny. If the volume was bigger or I was trying to encompass the whole protein, this process will, will take a lot more time. And it should be done presently. I'm going to wait until it says uh, that the target file was generated. There it is. And I'm going to open the ligand just to show you that if I had opened the ligand and used it as a reference, it will have find the same binding site. OK, so for this protein, at least for this example, this is pretty easy, pretty accessible. The case for other proteins, may, may, you may require to use the ligand to direct the box to a known ligand in a crystallographic structure or use other tricks, combination of information from the sequence, other experiments to figure out which is the binding site that you will uh, target. Yes. OK. Uh, we have these files which are the target and the like. Now to do the docking, then we did, we'll, we'll use ADFR. I'm going to show you the, the options. The most basic one will be using L for ligand, T for target file, C for cores, and I'll tell you why in a second, and minus O for output. So I, that's what I'm going to do. ADFR minus L for the ligand. PDBQT, make sure you do that. Minus T for the recepton, receptor, uh, PD, uh, this is TRG, sorry. Minus O, test. Uh, minus, it is just one minus. Minus O, yes. Minus C for the number of cores. Why I'm specifying the number of cores? It is because if I did not, uh, the system, the program would like to try to use all of the hyper trading cores, which for these programs, my computer will be will be appearing as a as if it was an eight core CPU, but it's not, it's hyper trading, and that usually doesn't accelerate the calculation. So use only or try to tell the program that you're only gonna use real cores. So again, ligand minus L, T for the target file, C for the cores, O for the output, um, and I'm gonna specify S for LGA. This is a specific for this version. Is LGA. Um, for this version, minus SLGS, that can run in Monte Carlo or LGA search. And in my experience so far, LGA is fastest. Remember, this is only for this release candidate version. If you have the previous version, version 1.0, uh, this option doesn't even exist. And finally, the other option I added is the no draw. These draw files are compressed files that the system use 
to store some of the results. And I have seen that in some cases, in some documents, you may get huge draw files in the hundreds of megabytes or even gigabytes. And it's unlikely that you are gonna actually need them or use them. I'm gonna stop the docking because since we, are, we have a, the crystallographic result, I can also use minus reference to calculate a difference between the structure that was uh, that was calculated in the docking versus the structure in the x-rays. I'm going to add the minus O because that way I'm going to overwrite what was calculated in the previous attempt. Uh, I do recommend you don't use that by default, that you check that if there's already results in your folder. Oh, I misspelled the name, PDPQT. So minus O will erase any previous results in the same folder. I recommend you do not use it by default because that way you will have to actually erase those results and then run the calculations again. This will save you, save you headaches of erasing results that you have already spent time calculating. So now we have to wait for these results to come out. They shouldn't take long. Uh, I'm gonna just keep an eye on them while recording. If I have to stop the recording and continue, I will. But le let's see how slow it is the actual calculation. Okay, here are the results. Uh, we can see that the process already finished and we have a long list of results. First of all, the best, the first one with the highest affinity is one that is uh, showing minus 6.2 kilocalories per mole, a cluster size of 68 and significantly distant for, from the crystallographic result. This is exactly what you will get mostly on, on any docking because they are not easy and the results are not always going to match crystallographic knowledge. So to check it on um, UCSF Chimera, we can use the 1GXAR that we have uh, used previously, that has no ligands, no deuteroatoms to uh, be the receptor that we're gonna compare to. Then we go to open and locate on the desktop in the test folder, the test lower dash out PDBQT. This is the file where we selected to uh, save our results. Because it's a PDBQT, Chimera is always gonna ask you to double check what file type it is, so we can open PDB. But it's gonna open all of the results right away. In order to distinguish them, we need the model panel window, and from that model panel window, selecting test, lower dash out, PDBQT, and ungroup. This is gonna generate independent structures for all the results, where we can select hide, and then just display the original. In this window, we can also open the PDB for the ligand that we prepared earlier to compare to the docking result. And as you can see, they, of course, the docking finds the binding site, but the pose, the form, the orientation, and the geometry of the ligand are not quite correct. They are close, and even the second one, it's close, but it's not exactly uh, what was solved crystallographically. And there's many reasons for this. It's not only that docking is a bit imprecise, but this gives us, uh, this analysis gives us a perspective to understand what to expect from docking and how to analyze it. These first two results are the biggest in terms of cluster size, maybe the fifth, let's see. The fifth, which is even more compressed or, or small, Further buried, further buried, and finally number nine. I, I wouldn't analyze much more than that, as it's clear that it's far from perfect. Yeah. Oh, here is one of the many mistakes, at least for this model, uh, that you can see in docking that an acid is buried in a in a large hydrophobic cavity. So I will probably settle for the first or the second result. And that will be not for analysis of the inside, although you can probably do that with a little 
a, a healthy self-criticism if you ever have to carry out that analysis. But I will use it for the next stage, maybe for docking refinement or even molecular dynamics. Either of those two are close enough and maybe uh, a molecular dynamics approach could relax them or let them reach the, the state that is mostly relevant for understanding this protein and the interaction it has with the lichen. So I hope this video is uh, useful and that you can take advantage of it to perform your docking with ADFR. There's another video using Windows, and but this, this uh, method I show you here can be carried out exactly the same in Windows and in Mac, where you can use ADFR, AGFR GUI, and UCSF chimera. So until the next one, see you later.